and it started for diplomats kids, uh, mostly in Europe, but around the world. And the idea was is that they had a standard high school experience, uh, high level high school experience. So whenever they applied to colleges back in the States, they had a sort of level playing field, okay? Because I don't know if you know, in the, in the United States, each state has a different set of curriculum. Like you could be taking a different math, a different year, a different history. I think we do things really kind of weird in Pennsylvania, whereas we do US history one in eighth grade and US history two in 10th grade. Like, you know, you're just supposed to stop at the Civil War and then remember <laughs> everything for, uh, for a couple of years. It's really weird. But um, anyway, so that's where it came from. And IB only existed for most of its existence as the diploma program in 11 and 12. And what the diploma program is, is it's supposed to be freshman level work in college for your junior and senior year. So the idea was that when you finished this IB diploma and you got the IB diploma, which we'll talk about later, you completed your freshman year of college. Uh, now there was a problem with that. And when I first started at Chenley, I taught at Chenley for 10 years. Um, you only had the diploma program. So you were sticking kids that were doing 10th grade high school level work into a freshman college course and there were tears and gnashing of teeth and craziness and what the heck did we do this for and this is horrible and it was sort of a rough transition. So IB decided, and this wasn't just at our school, it was, it was worldwide, to come up with the MYP program, which is what Mike's responsible for. And the MYP program starts in sixth grade for us and it eases you into the diploma program. Each year you add different pieces until you're ready for that 11th grade year. So you're not doing the regular Pittsburgh Public School curriculum, you're doing the curriculum but it's adjusted to meet IB requirements. So um, it's very helpful, it's very interesting and it helps me a lot, it helps the diploma kids a lot. Um, let's talk about what you're doing in your 11th, 12th grade year. Just so you know, diploma program course lasts two years. You have to take all six of them plus a seventh, which we'll talk about in a second. Group one is English, language A. So you have English for two years. You have two different teachers. Uh, the idea behind IB is that it's it's primarily a, a writing-based program, okay? It's not like AP where you take a bubble test at the end of your AP course, A, B, C, D, which is what is the answer. IB asks you to go deep, not wide, all right? I taught AP US history for years. AP US history, you start at Christopher Columbus. You end with now Barack Obama. You are expected to know just a little bit about everything. Whereas in IB, we want you to know about the Cold War. You have to understand it from the American angle, from the Russian angle, from the Chinese angle, from the Vietnamese angle, from the Cuban angle, from the French angle, okay? You have to understand the depth. Going deep is a lot harder than going this way. The example I always give, and Mike's probably so tired of hearing this by now. I still like it. The one year on the AP uh, test, there were two questions on Molly Pitcher. Who knows who Molly Pitcher was? There's a rest stop in New Jersey. I see, <laughs> that, right, I, I've been to that same rest stop. Great, I know, that's, that's, that's the extent I had with Molly Pitcher until this one year. Molly Pitcher was a lady, get ready for it, brought pitchers of water to soldiers on the Revolutionary War battlefield. There were two questions on Molly Pitcher that year. Okay, like that would be my lesson on Molly Pitcher right there, by the way, if I was giving you a lesson on Molly Pitcher. And there were two questions on the Civil Rights Movement that year. So, Molly Pitcher two, Civil Rights Movement two. Yeah. All right, uh, IB doesn't do that. IB doesn't ask for trivial information that you could look up on your phone in three minutes if you needed to, okay? IB needs you to understand when it happened, why it happened, how it happened, what happened after it happened, repercussions, stuff like that. To me, that's much more interesting. It's much more difficult to do. And if your kid can do this, they can do this, no problem. When I used to teach AP, we have AP tests next week. The thing with AP is, is that we'd review for a month. You know, we'd do two review sessions a day. Bang, 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 bang. You take all these different, all these different review sessions. The kids would take the test. The kids did well on the test. And then for the rest of the year, we had nothing else to do. So we'd do like quiz games and <coughs> stuff like that. And the kids would suck at it. And I'd say like, what's wrong with you guys? You know, you guys got good scores on your AP exams. And like, we forgot it all because it was just stuff like Molly Pitcher. You know, like once you regurgitate it for your test, it immediately leaves your mind because it's pretty much worthless. So. <laughs> Uh, ID is different. And I don't mean really worth it, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> understanding who came after Herbert, who, or, or who came after Calvin Coolidge as president is only important if you understand how it led to, you know, the Great Depression and how it led to the New Deal and stuff like that. If you just know who came after who, and it's a trivia game, who cares? You know, like really, when you think about it. And I'm, and I'm a storehouse for worthless yeah. knowledge too, believe me. Unless you're on Jeopardy. Unless you're on Jeopardy, right. I mean, it really doesn't mean anything. So that's the, that's the difference with, with IB, okay? So you take English, and part of English is uh, all IB classes, you have three assessments you have to do uh, for your IB score. And everything in IB is scored out of seven. Each of these classes 
passes the scored out of seven. We'll talk more about that later. But in English, you'll have to do two papers, all right, which is coming up starting next week. And there are different days where you sit down for two hours and write about a piece of literature, all right? But you also have to do an IB oral assessment for pretty much every class that isn't math or science. And what that IB oral assessment is, is that for English, you go in for your assessment, you are given a work of literature you've never seen before, you have 20 minutes to read it, and then you have to talk about it for 20 minutes. No prompting, you just speak to a recorder for 20 minutes, we put burn it onto a CD and we mail it somewhere. They grade it. Okay, we do the grading, but IB does the ultimate grading. So if I like your kid and I think your kid's a good person and I want to give that kid a good grade, can't do it because I got to send it somewhere else to, to be assessed. Okay, and to me, that's where that depth and that interesting part comes from because you have to be able to talk about something, not just fill in a bubble. And I think that that is, is difficult and I think that that's a skill that a lot of kids don't have. Um, so that's English, right? Uh, group two is the second language, Spanish, French, German, Japanese. You got to take one of those, you got to do it for two years. The idea is you should have been taking it for more than those two years. Uh, and that's what the MYP program is for. And I always tell the kids, IB is about getting into something and getting better at it. Uh, in college, I, uh, I, I was a Latin American studies minor, so I took Spanish and Portuguese. I suck at both, okay? So <laughs> I, can, I can read uh, a little bit of Spanish, Portuguese, like seriously, if you put anything down in front of me and like put a gun on me and said read what this says I'd, I'd be done okay like there's no way like I, I'm horrible so instead of becoming good at one thing I stink at multiple things <laughs> IB wants you to be good at something and to develop something which I think is very important group three that's your history every kid when they come in has to take uh, 20th century history in their senior year that junior year you do history of the Americas or European history you choose your kid chooses sophomore year uh, Europe, history of the Americas is interesting because it's not just American history. It is a lot of American history, but you will study the Civil Rights Movement. You study the Great Depression. But you look at it from the American angle, also from Latin America, South America, and, Cana and the Canadian angle as well. We actually do Canadian history here. Most of it is about hockey, but uh, we do <laughs> Canadian history here. And, uh, and Tim Hortons too. But, uh, but then everybody has to do 20th century history. How it works then your, uh, for your assessment senior year you will take one of your questions, one of your papers will be about either history of the Americas or European history, and then your other two papers are about 20th century history. And once again, the kids pick from topics presented, and they have to write lengthy papers on these topics, <coughs> where they have a cut like an hour, two hours to do these papers, and that's how they're assessed. All right, uh, group four, group four, uh, science. Now, the reason we do it this way, it's not how we should do it, but this is how we do it. Every kid takes physics their junior year, and then senior year you pick bio or chem. The reason we do it that way is because in Pennsylvania we have the PSSAs, and on the PSSAs there is a little bit of physics, a little bit of bio, a little bit of chem. So that's why we do it that way, okay? So their senior year then they pick either bio or chem. Uh, group five, math and computer science. If your kid wants to be an engineer uh, in the medical professions, anything like that, they have to take mathematics. Mathematics is the higher level math, okay? That's pre-calc and calculus. For the first time this year, we're <coughs> offering higher level mathematics, which is calculus and calculus two, okay? Uh, so if they want to do something like that, they have to be in mathematics. Math studies is a math course for people that don't like math or people that aren't going to apply math. I always hated math because I didn't see any real application for it. It was just like, you know, uh, if I'm painting my house, how much paint do I need, you know, how many gallons, who cares, I'll go to Home Depot and get another gallon if I run out, okay, like to me it was always really like kind of dumb. So what you do in math studies is you take all the math you've ever learned and actually apply it in like useful situations, okay, which I think is really interesting, the kids actually enjoy. Uh, and then the last thing uh, is uh, the arts, theater, film, music, and visual arts. I teach film, film's a two year course. What we do in my class is the first year you do history, theory of film, kids watch a bunch of stuff that they've they should watch, I think, and that they most of them have never seen before. Like we watch Citizen Kane for a couple of weeks, we tear it apart, we look at it from all different angles, we look at a bunch of stuff that I think makes them more interesting people. They think it makes them more interesting people at the end of it. The Simpsons make sense to them for the first time because you know it's like, oh wow, that was a North by Northwest reference. I had no idea that's what that was. Like now it makes sense to me. It's not just funny because he fell down. So uh, that's what we do in film. And then senior year in film, they have to write, produce, and direct a seven minute movie with a one minute trailer in groups of four. Uh, and here's the thing about IB too, which is really interesting. And it's gonna sound kind of bad, but IB is about process over product. And here's what that means. Last year, one of my groups produced the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a zombie movie. 
which was so bad, I didn't know, like, like I would, I would fight with him every day, like, guys, this, this is terrible, like, this is terrible, what are you doing? You don't understand, like, you're right, I don't understand, this is terrible, like, we can't do this. And IB asks, not that you put out the most wonderful product ever, but that whatever you put out, you can explain why it is you put out what you put out. Now, they didn't get a seven, they didn't get a six, they didn't even get a five, they got fours, all right, in higher level film, which for this product is amazing that they could, that they could do this, all right? They explained what they did, all right? They explained it very well. Now, they would have gotten a much higher score had they done a better product, but IB is all about being able to justify what you've done, which I think is interesting and different. And important too, yeah. because this gives you the skill to take what you've done and actually learn from it and apply it in new situations. And I think that's the real thing that makes it different is that they could not only say, like, look, this is why we made the choice that we made, but then as IB students, you have the ability to evaluate it and say, like, I think it would have been better had we done this. Yeah, like and I they think that's what it makes stunk. the big difference. They admitted, but it wasn't just like yeah. this is awful. Right. They could say, well, this is bad because. And again, it would have been better had they made a better film, but I think it's also a really important skill to be able to look at what you've done, good or bad, analyze it dispassionately, be able to express yourself, both so you know and other people know how to make things different in the future. Yeah. Okay, so that's a diploma program, all right? Uh, go ahead. What's HL on mathematics? Uh, higher level mathematics, okay? So that's one step up from mathematics, okay? Mathematics was only offered at standard level before. Which, okay, let's go into that for a second. Also, too, uh, I'm going to explain this in, in, a, in a minute, so just follow along here. <laughs> this is kinda, uh, they also have to take a class called Theory of Knowledge, which Theory of Knowledge is a philosophy course in high school. They have to take it for two years. This is where that sort of interesting part comes in, all right? Uh, theory of Knowledge, you talk about what you know, how you know what you know, why you know what you know, okay? It's how to think, why you think the way you think, which is really sort of a heady, interesting uh, idea for juniors and seniors in high school. Uh, they also have to complete the extended essay, and this is for their IB exam. The extended essay is a 4,000 word college level research paper that they have to do independently. All right, the extended essay is no joke. It's a college paper in high school. The kids that do the extended essay have a jump start on college. They just really do. And the last thing, they have to do creativity action service. They have to complete 150 hours of creativity action service. Every kid does in order to get a diploma from here. It's part of their senior project, okay? And what IB does, like everything else, they don't want you to do what other schools do for community service, go to the old age home for an hour, pick up trash for an hour, do stuff like that. They want you to get involved in whatever it is you're involved in, spend time in it, and grow in it, okay? So they have forms to fill out that justify all the things that they do for that. Now let me talk about the diploma very quickly. The diploma, all of these courses are out of seven points, all right? And you need 24 points for a diploma. So what does that average out to for each class? Come on, come on, math people, let's go here. You have six classes. All right, seven points per class, you need 24 points for a diploma. Four. Four, okay. Four, four points per course is what they need to get their IB diploma. Now, I'm not downgrading what it takes to get an IB diploma. It's actually very difficult, but I think if you look at it like that, that's a pretty attainable number. Okay, so that's that's something that you know I, I uh, kids get scared originally, but I think that's very attainable. Okay, um, they have to also pass their extended essay, they have to pass their theory of knowledge essay, and they have to do 150 CAS hours. But that's what it takes to get an IB diploma. And we should say right now that this isn't to get a diploma to graduate from high school. This is to get the IB diploma, which has a whole host of other benefits. Your child will still graduate with a fifth degree from Pittsburgh Public Schools if they choose not to do all of these tests that are required for the diploma, but this is called the IB you know, diploma that you take. Now, now, let me talk about that for a second. It costs around $800 for your IB diploma, okay? October of your senior year, I, we have meetings with the parents, the kids, you decide whether or not you're gonna pay the money for the IB diploma. It's 150 bucks to register, and it's 100 bucks for each test after that. Now the colleges I had in here today, and a lot of colleges, will actually offer sophomore status to kids that get an IB diploma, okay? A lot of colleges, though, do not. Pitt, Penn State, Temple, they do not. They offer three credits for every higher level course that you get a five or above in. So that's nine credits. So still, you can get nine credits at Pitt, Penn State, or Temple, for around, what is it, 450 bucks. And I think a credit at Pitt is around 450 bucks. 
Yeah, Probably uh, more. more. No, it's that. more than that. Okay. Something. So so what I'm saying is when you do the cost benefit, I mean it's really it, it makes sense to do this, okay? And again, you don't have to do the whole diploma. If you know that your child isn't going to be getting that higher level in math and they just want to do their examination in film in English, then that's great. You know, they can do that examination in film in English and pass out of those classes. Um, and so they can really focus on the areas that they're stronger in. Um, the other thing that kind of shows up with this is that not every school let you pass out of even some classes. If right. you get into CMU, you've got to get sevens on your higher level classes to pass <laughs> out. Well, getting a seven is like seeing a unicorn. However, <laughs> what happens is at CMU, because if you take the test, and they know that you're taking the test, students who take the test are much more likely to get into CMU. Not even the whole thing, just one or two. CMU accepts 38% of most people apply. They accept 69% of students who take at least one of these tests because they realize that students who choose to take this upon themselves are more focused, are a little more mature, have the skills that they need to make it through CMU. So even if a school isn't going to let you pass entirely out of things, you know, you still have this ability. And just so when you're talking to your kids about it, most students don't want to actually leave college early. It's kind of fun. You want to stay. It's nice for you. You get They get to st you know skip out of a year of college if they get the whole thing. But for students, this means that they can then take those interesting classes. Their freshman year is not lost with intro to English and intro to math and intro to intro to. They can actually jump into and take those courses that they're actually interested in and maybe move their way on towards a master's or maybe just space it out so that rather than four classes per semester to get it done, they can do three and focus on them and get really decent grades and get a full yeah. experience out of it. And, and that's so, what most kids do. Most yeah. kids end up taking 12 credits a semester in college to get the diploma, and they, they go to the IB schools to accept the sophomore status, and so they'll, you know, they breeze through college because of it. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm more interested in the practical aspect. Sure. So who do we tell if, uh, if, if 